Hey gamers, today we're going to look at Helios. Let's check it out. To set up the game, each player is going to get their own little player bag, their own little player board with their little world here, with a little sun disc here, and a sun motion tracker that starts here at 2. They're also going to get a building board here, and they're also going to get a random little piece of land that goes in the center of the world they are building, and they can get any one of the colors. It can be green, brown, or gray. They may not get blue or black to start off because those colors are a little bit more rare. They're also going to shuffle up these three tile decks and deal out some here in that order. Uh, and then, of course, the first player is going to get this nice little first player pawn, and you are ready to play. Now, uh, how to play the game is fairly simple. All you're going to do in phase one is you're going to pick one of these tiles. You start from the bottom and move up from any one of these rows, and then you're going to take the action. So let's say you took this action. Uh, you will take the tile and you'll put it, as you see, there are green, blue, and orange tiles here. Uh, white tiles are just wild tiles, and you can go in any one of these categories. But you're going to take it and put it in its appropriate color down there. I'll explain more about that later. Now, now, once you've done that, let's say this is the land action, you may take any one of the land tiles that you see here. And what you're going to do is just pick it up and put it on your board. Now, placing these land tiles, it must touch an existing land tile. So, for instance, I cannot place it out here. That would be illegal because it's not touching another tile. So, you got to make sure it touches another tile. Now, on your player board, there are spots that if you cover, you will get bonuses. So, for instance, if I was to play later on, maybe play this here, and I'd cover these two red stones there, that's called mana. Uh, this is mana in the game, and you have a little spot here, this little red area, is where you keep all your mana. I'll explain what that does in a minute. Or you could also move, and uh, maybe next, instead of putting it there, you could have placed it here. And that white cube is just random, that means any random resource of your choice. So you would just choose a resource and just add it to your planet. There are other spaces outside the board that have the number four, and those mean victory points. So instead, if I was to build something maybe out here, if it's touching one of the fours, then at the end of the game, I'm going to get four additional victory points. And of course, any victory points that you gather during the game are kept in this bag. This one here is the sun motion tile. This is orange, so the player would put it here. And they would rotate the sun around their planet as many times as the tracker allows. At first, it's only two, so I'd go one, two. Now, what sun tokens do is that if there is any, if you've already spent any of these resources, and I'll explain how you can spend these resources later on, but if you spent one of these resources and the sun ends its turn by that tile, then you would replenish that res uh, resource from the bag of cubes here and put it back on the board. Now, uh, you do not have to move the sun the full distance. For instance, if I move two, it'd go one, two. Well, I could only do, it's only touching this gray one, so I get that gray one back. But I really want that green one. Well, instead, I just could have gone one space, one. The sun is touching both of these tiles, so each one will replenish a resource. So you can you don't have to go the full turn of the sun if you don't want to. Now speaking of the sun, whenever you go, and you have to go around some of your tiles here, but whenever it makes one circle around, you're going to get five victory points every turn. And so of course whenever you do that, you'll take your little bag, put your little victory points in there, kind of hides it from the other players so they don't really know what you got. Uh, but that's what you'll do every time the sun goes completely around your planet. And of course, as you're building your planet, the longer it's going to take for the sun to go up. But there are ways to get your sun moving a little bit faster. I'll explain how in just a second. The third and final action is you can take a building tile. Remember, you have to take from the bottom and play up. Of course, I put it here in blue. What this does is I can build a temple. Now, there are two places you can build temples. You can build them on your planet or in your building area. First off, let me talk about on your planet. To build the first temple costs one resource. So maybe I take this resource out and I build my little temple here. Now, if later on in the game, if I took another building tile, let's say, and uh, I would have to pay two resources. So one, two and then I could place it anywhere on one of these empty tiles. 
Now, uh, if I wanted to pay a third one, uh, it'd be three and so on and so forth. So the more temples you have out here, the more expensive it is and resources to get it. But what temples do is every time you move your sun around and it stops on a temple, uh, you're gonna get a victory point. So in this case, I would get one victory point. But if my sun stopped there, I would get two victory points. And that's every time my sun stops on those tiles. Now these tiles cease from giving resources. However, now it's churning out victory points. Now, another thing you can do, instead of building on your planet, you can actually build here in your city. And when you build on your city, you have to pay the resources as you see here. Now, I'm not gonna go through what every city does, but once you place and build on that city, you would pay the necessary resource, get the victory points associated with it, and also get the rewards. So for instance, when you see these plus circle dots, that means it's gonna improve your sun track. So if I was to play one black cube, I'd get three victory points, and I'd improve my sun track by three, one, two, three. So now instead of going two spaces, my sun can go five. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, replenish both of those resources. So it moves a lot faster. Of course, there's other places you can go up two, or you can go at one and it counts for victory points for any temples that you have out. This one you play a black or blue cube and for every uh, uh, temple that you put out here, it only costs you one resource. So last time I told you to put out a second temple would cost me two. If I had a building here already, then every temple that I put out would only cost me one resource. Uh, this one, you pay a black and blue cube, get the victory points, get some extra mana. Let me put a little on there. And of course, whenever you move around the sun, instead of getting five victory points, now I'm going to get 10. Uh, this one gives you uh, a, an extra sun movement up. This one gives you some extra mana. And it gives you an extra action. This one gives you two extra mana. This one gives you four extra mana. So you kind of see how this is going. And of course, the instructions will tell you what each one does. Now, once you build a city there, it is a one-time reward. You do not get the reward ever again, unless it is one of the permanent conditions I spoke about earlier. Every player is going to get four turns, so they'll get to choose four tiles. Now, uh, again, uh, if they pick a land tile, they can't pick one of these two because these have already been chosen. They have to pick one of the remaining ones. Now, after you've done all four, uh, all these tiles will be taken. You're going to replenish uh, the deck, so I mean you you'd get cubes out of the bag, not off this board, but you'd replenish cubes on the next, uh, renew those tiles, and then it would go to the second phase. What you're going to do is you're going to hand out or show, you may have these already out on the board, but you're going to put out these cards and people are going to be able to buy them with any mana they have stored. These cost anywhere from two to four mana, and they can do various things for you. So each player, starting with the first player, can go around and buy one of them. And what they do, as you see, they are all featured on the night side. Well, you've got it to activate them. You've got to pay the resources that you see on the bottom here. Remember, white means any type of resource. Some of them ask for specific resources or two of a specific resource and one random. Whenever you pay that, that's when you'll flip them over and they're in the daytime and they can give you a, war a reward. This first one gives you a resource of your choice and at the end of the game, three victory points for every temple you have out. This one gives you, uh, when it's flipped over, it's gonna give you two mana, two more sundial pushes, that's great, and then 12 victory points. This one, when it's flipped over, at the end of the game, all these little four pointers here that you see on the board, if you reach there, instead of four points, you're gonna get eight for each. Uh, this one here gives you a cube of your resource of your choice, and if you have ev all five of the different types of terrain out, it's gonna give you a bonus three victory points. Uh, this one gives you, uh, any for any special tokens uh, that you get, you would uh, get an extra five points. Now, I didn't talk about special tokens yet, so let me go ahead and talk about that. If you were ever to get four of a kind here, and remember, whites are wild, so maybe I played it here, well, I'd have a bonus action. Whenever you get four, you cash these in, and you get a bonus action. That bonus action can be anything. You can grab more land, you can build more temples, or you can rotate your sun around more. Now, when you do this, you can also take one of these little bonus tokens here, these bonus land tokens to put them out on the board and maybe get the reward too. But at the end of the game, they'll also give you points. For instance, this one for every empty square you get, you'll get a, um, a, a victory point. Uh, these two here, for every leftover resource or land tile you have on your planet, you'll get two victory points per resource or land tile. 
And then finally, this other one that you can choose, for every temple you have out on your planet, you'll get four victory points. Uh, so that's what you can get with the bonus actions when you get four of a kind. Uh, and that can happen immediately. Once you get four of a kind, you take your bonus action. And so this one will give you five victory points for having any of these on your board. Plus it moves your sun up Two, of course, like I said, and gives you some more mana. Uh, this one here is kind of just like that bonus card I showed you earlier. It'll give you two victory points for every land tile you have out on your planet. This one lets you move your sun up again, and this one's very powerful here. It will double the victory points of where you are on your tracker. So right now I'm at 11. Whew, that'd be 22 victory points. That'd be huge. Uh, and then finally this one, which costs four mana, but it's really good when you flip it over, each one of your mana at the end of the game count for three victory points. Now, regularly, they only count for one victory point. But if you have this card, it triples in value. Plus, any of your resources also count as two victory points if you have them left over. But remember, you have to pay the resources to flip over the card to get those in-game bonus points. But once everyone's picked a card, then you go over again. You start over again, dealing out more tiles, and then first player goes to the next person, and then they start randomly choosing the tiles. Now, the game ends after four rounds. So basically you're getting 16 actions plus any bonus actions you can acquire during that time. So you may want to, you may not want to do uh, something that was in orange, but hey man, I need that orange tile. I don't really want to do that turn, but I really want the orange tile to get my bonus move. But at the end of the game, you're going to add up, of course, any in-game victory points you have. You're going to get, of course, like I said, one victory point for every leftover mana. And then, of course, any victory points that you have here in your bag. And whoever has the most victory points wins. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, uh, this game is really cheap online, and uh, I, I kept seeing it and I kept passing it up. I was like, well, it must not be that good, because honestly, if, if you can find this for 10 bucks, <laughs> at least at the point of this video. Uh, everyone sells it for like 10 bucks or sometimes cheaper if you can get it. Uh, so I got this for 10 bucks, opened it up, played it, and we had a great time. Uh, I don't understand the theme that much, but I love this game. Uh, this is usually not my cup of tea, because again, the theme about building your own world and exactly what's going on, mana, seems like it has its own little world, which is very interesting. I just don't know what the purpose of it is, but the game is fun, building worlds. To be honest, this is one of those games that when it ends, you're like, I would need one more turn. In fact, I am going to test out a house rule where instead of four rounds, you get a fifth round. But I don't really know how that's going to work. Maybe two, I don't know. In a three-player game, give them extra two rounds, maybe. Uh, that way, everyone gets to go first twice. Yeah, that may work. Maybe I'll do it that way. Uh, but it seems like you always need that one extra move to get those extra land tiles or to get this person unlocked. And the game, to be honest, four rounds, the game goes pretty well. That's probably where the sweet spot is supposed to be. But it's just like every time it ends, you're like, no, it already ended. Oh, no. Uh, so many choices, so many paths to victory. There are different strategies you can implement, especially when you get those character cards and you unlock them. That changes your whole strategy. Like I got the sun guy once and I, all I did was do things that got my sundial up. You know, someone else took over the four corners of the board with those four victory points. And then they got that other girl, uh, the guy, whatever he is, that gives those four and turns them into eight. Uh, so, like I said, the characters that you get dictate your path to victory, and there are several paths to victory in this. Uh, I, and because it only goes four rounds, your, the gameplay will always be different. Uh, picking those tiles, like I said, by color really matters. Uh, the, only, like, the only thing I don't like is they, those victory point tiles, the single ones, you go through those quick. Uh, very soon I had to start asking people, hey, do you have change? Can you, can you give me five of those for a five token? Give me five ones? Because I kept having to ask people for change because you could you eat through those ones. So, that, that, but that's a small complaint. Other than that, for 10 bucks, to be honest, this is well worth your time, or even 20 bucks is well worth your time. So there you go. All right, gamers, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, game on.